Hola everyone and welcome to Play It Like Dimebag. I tuned my guitar into standard 440 so that it makes things easier for you to practice. I also have the backing track in standard E which you can have access to if you sign up and become a member on my Patreon site. More on that uh, below the link. So today we're gonna go through the lesson part of Cemetery Gates solo and I decided to dissect it into two pieces. First we go through the moody part and then next we go through the uplifting part. So while picking the third fret on the bass string, which is the first note we pick, you also have to push down the tremolo bar so it goes lower than the forthcoming note, the second fret on the bass string, which you are going to as you release the bar and then pull off to that very same note, the B2. Sound like this. <laughs> So it gives the effect that it's like the same note played twice and the first one is coming from lower. And then slide up to the third fret with your index finger, then hammer on to the fifth. And then pick the same note with the down stroke and slide up to the seventh and then back to the fifth on the B string. The first slide is a bit slower and it's behind a bit with the blues feel and the second one is, more, is faster. Pick the third fret with an upstroke and then pull off to the second and then use the tremolo bar for vibrato. And then on beat 3 in the next bar, pick the 5th fret on the A string with an upstroke and then downstroke on the B 2nd, upstroke on E5 again and then with the downstroke pick the B 2nd and E 4th at the same time so that they ring together. and then use the whammy bar for vibrato at the end. In bar number three, after beat two, on an up beat, pick and slide up to the fifth on the B string, and then up stroke on E9, down stroke on B5, and then up stroke on E9, and again at the end use the whammy bar for vibrato. And also, after the last note, the E9, push down the bar, which gives the effect like if you would play an extra note there, like this. A little more gentle than that. On the third beat, from the fifth of the B string, slide up to the ninth fret, and then with an upstroke, pick the twelfth on the E string, and then downstroke on B9, and then upstroke on E10, and still use the whammy bar for the vibratos at the end. And on the third beat, pick the same note with the downstroke now, and pull off to the ninth and downstroke on B12, go back with an upstroke to E9, and then back to B10, and vibrate it with the bar, and then drop it before the next note. In bar 7 comes that descending chromatic part, which I saw most players play with a different taste and vibe, unlike Dime used to do it. And the feel is a bit like if you would play staccatos, but you also generate some pick noises so that you fill in that gap, that space with some extra information. This kind of noise. <laughs> Try to mute these notes by putting the edge of your pick onto the strings and use upstrokes for this one. 
it just makes things sound so much heavier and dirtier and I believe it's just a cool and fun technique. Starting with the downstroke, you slide up to the tenth and then already after that one you put onto the string the pick so that you generate that noise. And then start the descending part up until the fifth and before the fifth there's a little bit of pause there and also start to play with an alternate picking lick starting with the downstroke then with an upstroke back to the sixth and then end it with the downstroke on the seventh together rest it's a very small one but it makes a whole lot of difference and then pick the seventh note on the E string with the down stroke adding some ghost notes then down on B7 up on E7 and then down on B7 but also bend this one up a whole note and vibrate it with the whammy bar and then pick the E7 with an upstroke again and then the B7, adding the same whole note bend up. And for both bendings, use your ring finger, because after the second one, you have to pick the 8th fret with the pinky, while you still keep bending up that 7th, and then drop the 8th and pull off to the 5th, like this. And then vibrato. Together. Live, then I'm used to vibrate this last note uh, much heavier compared to the studio version, which uh, is more laid back like that. Whereas live. Now, this part is getting very serious, where you need to use your ears to really understand what's going on and just have your inner rhythm for making this sound like Dimebag. Great method or tip, worth to mention, I think, is uh, try to dissect this lick and then put them together. That, I believe, is the most efficient way learning this part and all such licks anyways. Once you have the actual notes with all the right phrasings down, then you can start trying to play it with the right feel as well. Do not try everything at the same time, because things might get uh, much more frustrating that way. Efficiency is the key here. I think it's a great method. So the first fragment of it would be this one. It starts with a downstroke and a slide up with the index finger from around the fifth to the ninth on the B string and then we start the actual lick. So pick the ninth now again to the downstroke then hammer on to the tenth and then to the twelfth and then on the E string with the downstroke pick the ninth fret up on the tenth hammer on to the twelfth pull off back to the tenth and then to the ninth and end it on the B twelfth with the downstroke. This should be the first part to master before moving on. So that last B12 is actually the first note of the next part, but it's always better to end it on the beat so that you have a better sense and understanding on where you are at and it will also make easier tying the parts together. So part number two of this lick starts on B12 with a downstroke and then upstroke on E9, downstroke on E12 and then slide up to the 14th and pull off to the 12th and then to the 10th and then repeat to the 12th with the hammer on and then pull off to the 10th together this is unusual and then from the 14th with an upstroke slide up to the 16th repeat the same kind of lick pull off to the 14th 12th, 14th, and 12th. So together, these two. And then up to the 17th from the 16th with an upstroke. 
We'll stop there. After we ended up on the 17th with an upstroke, pull off to the 16th and the 14th on the E string, then downstroke on B 17th, upstroke on E 14th, and downstroke on E 17th, and slide up to the 21st fret. So far. And from the 21st, pull off to the 17th, downstroke on the B 19th, upstroke on E 17th and downstroke on B19. So far. And then the last part of this lick starts on the 19th on the E string with an upstroke and then pull off to the 16th, downstroke on B17, upstroke on E16 and finish it on B17. Bar 15 is probably the easiest part of the entire solo. It's a simple chromatic lick using alternate pickings starting from the E 12th up to the E 15th first. And then repeat it from A 12th to A 15th. Then again from A 14th up to A 17th. Down, up, down, up all the time and finish it from D 14th up to D 17th. There is slight uh, mutings and it kind of opens up along the way. And then bar 16th uh, is much more challenging like that using lots of ghost notes and have a blues feel that is very different compared to the previous bar which is a more straightforward one compared to this 16th one. Downstroke on both G and B 14th and then play ghost notes starting with an upstroke and then a downstroke and then end up playing the same two notes on the 14th fret. So it's twice and after the second time stop on the same fret the 14th the G and the B string. And also make sure that you bend up all these notes. Dime, I believe, used to bend up upwards and not downwards. Sounds a little different. And that was part number one. Thank you very much. This was it for today. And lesson two is on the way. Have a great one. Ciao. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Share. <laughs> Thank you very much for tuning in.